Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Chris, your sneaker professor. I'm back again on Friday, and this time it's not like a heavy topic. It is my choice for sneaker of the year. Now, you've seen other lists that are starting to pop up and that will pop up over the next few weeks. I'm cutting all of that short now. I've done, you know, top 40 and top 20 sneakers of the year list before. And they look unlike anyone else's list. If you want to see those, I'm going to talk about them here in this article. But let's get to the real sneaker of the year that comes from Unless Collective. And the name of the sneaker is The Degenerate. And it's hard to say that. You really don't realize how difficult it is to say the, the, back to back. But let's get into it. You see over here to my side, the great uh, clothing, the sweaters, the pants, the shoes and there is the shoe in that picture next to me you can click through in the description and read more about the degenerate or you can simply watch this video and i'm jumping into my discussion right now so let's get it all plants no plastic the world's first regenerative regenerative sneaker made from the elements to be worn in the elements and designed to return harmlessly to the elements earth has a favorite new shoe handmade in italy using next gen plant powered technology from natural fiber welding you've heard me talk about them here the future of sustainable sneakers is plastic free and that's why this is my sneaker of the year but i have to get into it because i know right now Somebody saying, nah, son, Virgil forces. Or they're saying, are you crazy? Lost and founds. And I get that. In the real world, consumers don't rate sneakers or rank them at the year's end. The everyday consumer isn't worried about flexing on someone or using footwear to stand out in a crowd. To be honest, the everyday consumer doesn't really care about kicks that much. These customers tend to buy what they can find quickly and what they can readily afford. Style and looks are important. Don't let me lead you to think it's not. And the desire to wear cool sneakers it's always under the, the surface. It's always sitting there for everyone. But those consumers, they don't look that deeply at sneakers to create these sneaker of the year list. That happens in the sneakerhead community. Sneakerhead. Every year, after an entire year of over a thousand new releases, sneaker culture decides which pairs are worthy of their top ranked list. I can't act like I don't do it. I do it on this site as well. If you missed it, here's my top 40 sneakers of 2017. And you can go through this list and figure out which one. And I have it broken down. It's very straightforward. Here's my top sneakers of 2018. And you can go through it and I give you qualifications. And my top sneakers of 2021. I give you these things because... I'm a part of this culture, man. As much as I like to be on the business side and give you information that you need, I'm a part of the culture. But as you see, I skipped 2019 and 2020 mainly because I was overwhelmed. And it's really hard making these lists. It's really difficult, especially when you attempt to remove the easy picks of the most expensive or most limited sneaker that's coveted by these resellers and desired as a grail to complete a Jordan 1 collection, but I digress. When I compile a top rank list, I've begun to focus on whether the model has elements of sustainability, of sustainability. and you'll see here why these shoes were chosen. You'll see the little logo on my list. And that's because it's important to me to talk about sustainability and eco-friendliness. In 2019, 
my whole sneaker world was just kind of shifted. I own two sneaker companies. I've written in papers and helped different companies and brands and retailers. And although I'm not like this big personality on YouTube, it's, um, I have to explain that when I went out there to California for the Footwear Innovation Summit, the things that I learned, it changed my it changed my life. And I mean, I've tried very hard to adhere to a lot of the things that I learned at that conference and my phone keeps going off. I apologize. But that event featured discussions on technology, uh, improvements in the industry. But it was two presentations that stuck with me. Two presentations. One from Ryan Hunt, who's the founder of Algex and Bloom. And if You've uh, never heard of that. I'm going to open this page up so you can see. I did an entire series. I went down to the facility in Meridian, Mississippi, recorded the entire thing. My kids actually did the recording, and I got to talk to Ryan about balloon foam, and it was very, it blew me away. It blew me away that they were going out there scraping algae off of lakes uh, making these lakes healthy again. And they were taking the algae and turning it into foam and pellets that are used inside of sneaker foams. Those are the kind of stories that are important and powerful. I also met Alan Lugo, who was employed at Merrill Footwear at the time. And he was working on sustainability with Wolverine Worldwide, which Merrill is a part of. Alan is now at Natural Fiber Welding, easily the most important company in the world right now. And I know that sounds like a big claim. It's a big claim. But Natural Fiber Welding is easily one of the most important companies in the world. I mean, and I have to say that. I went out there to California to discuss the importance of circularity in the sneaker culture. But this is the thing, circularity and sustainability and sneaker culture aren't the terms you hear on YouTube stations or in sneaker media outlets. The topic is glossed over and hardly ever given any consideration unless Nike is introducing its move to zero strategy into a coveted sneaker. Ranking sneakers and deciding the best drop of the year will never be about whether that sneaker has been built with the end of life in mind. What is end of life, right? Um, when a pair of sneakers reaches the point where the wearer of those sneakers decides to get rid of them, that has always been looked at as the end of life for that product. In reality, when you toss a pair of sneakers into the garbage bin or donate sneakers to charity, those sneakers eventually find their way into landfills where they take centuries to break down and when they do break down they introduce toxicity into the soil and why is this important the soil is the soul of the planet it heals filters and grows the things we need to survive when the majority of sneakers are made with toxic materials you get a result that slowly and quietly kills the planet. And, and this, is, this is why I'm saying this, because a lot of us aren't talking or looking at these things. On the coast of West Africa, the ships arrive day after day with an unrelenting cargo. In Ghana, they call them Obroni Wawu or the clothes of dead white men. Take this beer from Australia. They're the charity shop cast-offs from the Western world. Dirty. Now, I, I play that, and I'll probably get a copyright strike. I hope I don't. But I play that because towards the end of this, they show you a landfill where these products are being dumped in Ghana. And man, it is heartbreaking. And to know that our culture, know that sneaker culture itself 
is contributing to this, if it doesn't bother you, man, I don't know what to say. And I and and this is why the sneaker of the year this year, I'm not doing a list, right? And I know that sneakerheads prefer to not get into these discussions and, and we need to, we have to start doing it. And, and this is what's interesting about sneakerheads, sneaker enthusiasts. We could really be considered the most eco-friendly consumers in the sneaker business. Now, and that means I'm not going to disrespect my community because I know we don't throw away our sneakers. We clean them, we restore them, and we extend the life of those sneakers for as long as possible. There are entire businesses built around the way sneaker enthusiasts maintain collections. However, the same passion for sneakers has led to brands increasing the number of new collectibles to generate engagement and money. Brands all tout their moves toward being carbon neutral, but they never address the end of life of their products. Big brands and eco-friendly programs, they can't exist. It's not happening as much as the brands like to say that. They can't exist. This is because big brands are growth companies. They are beholden to shareholders, employees, and the economy. In order to make capitalism work, it requires that things be sold. When the consumer isn't aware of the problems with the way their favorite products are manufactured and the education around those items are basically items of misinformation and greenwashing, consumption is maintained and ignorance is bliss wrapped up in a pair of multicolored modes of transportation, sneakers. And I love sneakers. I know the problems with the method of make. I try to highlight companies doing the right thing. But my living is built on the sale of products I know are bad for the environment. It's a paradox. But this is why I'm going to forego making a list that celebrates all of these shoes that have been made this year. It's hard anyway. And I'm naming the degenerate from unless collective and natural fiber welding the sneaker of the year. Now the question becomes, how can I call the degenerate the sneaker of the year without holding it in my hand? And here's the interesting thing. Now I'm flipping around here and I'm moving backwards. And I'm clicking over so you guys can see the jazz court. I put my money where my mouth is. I buy things that I think are good for the environment. And, you know, here are the shoes. I bought this Saucony because it basically adheres to the guidelines and the standards that the degenerate is uh, attempting to accomplish. And although I haven't held it in my hand, I do have to be very careful with promoting it so strongly because I bought this Saucony RFG a year ago. I barely wore it for seven days. And within that time, this sneaker got this hole in it. And I'm not, you know, and it's very very sneakerhead of me to not want to wear anything that has a hole in it, even though you probably look at it and you're like, hey, there's nothing wrong with those. If you want them, they're size 13. I'll send them to you. You know, so I don't wear them, but they do have this hole at the toe. And the more I would have worn this, man, my big toe would have shot out of these joints. It would have been terrible. And I apologize for all of the text messages. It's a busy morning. <laughs> Without testing the unless degenerate, I can say it's the sneaker of the year because I always look at the narrative of the sneakers, right? And last year, last year, 2021, the shoe that was my number one sneaker, and I'm scrolling down and I know you guys are looking at this like, I'm like man, I've never seen some of those shoes. Yeah, I have a very diverse idea of what's number one. 
um, the Sage Run, Sage Track Spike, that was my number one shoe. And that's because uh, Olympian Allison Felix is the founder of the company, and she overcame mistreatment by Nike during her preg pregnancy to reach the Olympics and become the most decorated track and field athlete in U.S. history wearing her own sneaker. That's a story. The Degenerate is a sneaker made unlike any sneaker in history. It's made from 100% natural inputs put together using chemistry that allows the materials to break down into the natural elements in return harmlessly to the earth. I don't need to hold this in my hand when I can look at this picture over here to my side and see that it can be ground up. You can send it back in and it can be made into other shoes. But more importantly, it could be tossed into a compost and you wouldn't have to worry about it. It's an extremely important sneaker. Now, for one second, imagine an Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG Lost and Found made like this. Never mind. You don't have to imagine a hype sneaker. You can actually buy a sneaker for less money that changes everything. I can only hope that other brands follow suit and do the same thing. Dead serious. If you want those Saucony's, man, you can write me, send me an email if you wear a size 13 or yours. Um, this is an amazing accomplishment by two companies, Unless Collective and Natural Fiber Welding. I hope that this gets a lot of views. I know I don't have a big station, but this is really important stuff, man. And this is my sneaker of the year. There's no way for me to even waste time looking at anything else. I don't care what dropped. And I'm a big fan of the, like the Carhu um northern lights collection i even just wrote that that's one of those shoes that's going to be on my top 20 shoes but i'm not even wasting time this year this is it this is it this is the sneaker of the year and i know everybody else may not say something like that but i do and that is the end of this video and i appreciate you for watching this long um if you like this type of content i'm trying to move more towards it uh, subscribe. I apologize again for all of the text messages on my phone and I'll see you guys on the next one. Shout out Natural Fiber Welding and Unless Collective. You did something amazing. I simply hope it doesn't break down the way these Sarconis did. Um, I just hope it doesn't. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.